Behind me, you should see a gradient from green to blue. Any idea what these colors represent? They represent link colors. Advertisement link colors, to be precise. Advertisements that Google serves on the web. They study what color link you're more likely to click on. In case you're interested, the more blue the link, the more likely you are to click on it. Um, our online lives, and nowadays that's becoming a larger and larger chunk of our waking lives in general, are lived in an advertisement-structured world. Google, YouTube, the Android operating system, Opera, Facebook, Twitter, the Firefox browser, all these services are monetized with ads. Firefox, which I'm sure many of you guys here use, you people here use, sorry, um, is monetized with ads. Google pays uh, the Mozilla Foundation a ton of cash to be the default option in their search bar. Why does Google care about that? More search results mean more ad impressions, mean more ad clicks, mean more revenue. Um, in fact, the ad-supported internet represents about 2.1% of the entire US GDP. 2.1%. It's a staggering number if you think about it. I mean, it's, it's like living in China. You know, the mobile and web numbers in general have a heady effect on your sense of scale. And that's just the web. The average American sees 300 to 3,000 ads a day. But I'm not here to lambast the online advertising model. I'm also here not to lambast Google. Um, I love Google. All you guys love Google. Everybody loves Google. Um, <laughs> and it obviously works. It makes, it makes a bunch of people, a, a few people, um, a, a ton of cash. It can also create a lot of value, co connecting the right person to the, to the correct product. And sometimes that actually, you can actually experience what you can actually experience that. It's not just a pain in the, it's not just a pain. Um, what I am here to talk about is the blinding lack of diversity in the model itself. Advertising has become paradigmatic. The model has remained relatively unchanged since the advent of mass media. So, uh, broadcast radio, TV, newspapers. I'm mean, sure we have Flash now and ads can track your location and target you using social data and all those other wonderful things, but the rudiments of the model are fundamentally unchanged. We have all this amazing technology everywhere you look that can do so, much am so many amazing things, but in the world of free digital information monetization, it's Citizen King. Now, maybe to you that sounds like a, like a bunch of geek stuff, but um, how free, free um, digital information is monetized affects you in a profound way. If you're one of the 500 million people on Facebook, or one, one of the masses of people that together make about three billion search queries a day, then you're affected by the myopia. So what happens when a, system, when a paradigm like this takes hold? Oh, and I'm missing letters. Okay. Um, you're just going to have to trust what I say and not have any visual aid. <laughs> um, what happens is that services get created designed and systematically iterated to be or systematically iterated to, to be more efficient at making money from ads and the best ones at doing that survive not the ones that create the most value not the ones that have the most powerful impact on your life the ones that serve the ad model the best and again i'm not here to attack the ad industry we make money in part from ads so i really can't can't say anything what i am here to attack is the lack of innovation and how free information is monetized because it influences the services that we use. All of us, everyone here, on a daily basis, probably hundreds of times, to create value in our lives. Now, my team and I were deeply fascinated and deeply troubled with this situation. Um, we're a bunch of rebels, we're, we're, we, all, we think that we're younger than we really are and have to be constantly fighting the established system. Um, perhaps a better way to see it is that we're allergic to stagnant ways of thinking about things. Um, this being a glaring example of one of them. So we conducted some tests, some studies on this topic on, on mobile devices. Um, we defined for ourselves an ad is an enticement to spend our money on third-party products or services, reducing our value as users essentially to one of a potential spender of money. Witless walking wallets, nothing more. Uh, one second. So we asked ourselves, what would happen if instead of asking, or instead of serving an ad, we asked a question instead? How would users respond to a power reversal where instead of trying to make them buy something, which is what ads do, we asked them what they thought about something. So in other words, getting the verb buy 
and replacing it with think. In okay, um, I'm going to have to wing this, so give me a break. Um, in our test mobile application, one percent of all ads got clicked. That means that one in every hundred times an ad was shown was clicked. Now the user response with questions wasn't two or three times better. It was consistently 10 times more than it was with ads. Consistently. And this wasn't a small test. This was some 10,000 people spread all over, all over the world in many, many different cultures. So it's not just a, it's not just a regional thing. And, and this freaked us out. This really, really freaked us out that there was this kind of human behavior that we didn't understand. And so we conducted many more tests that corroborated these findings um, in, again, all, all over the world. And I should also add that, that where this question was shown wasn't in some odd place. It was in the place on the, on the screen on your mobile phone that's normally where the ads are. So that part on the screen that your brain tells you, ignore that part because it doesn't add there. That was, that was where we placed the questions. The only difference being that it was a, a question instead of an ad. And we provided a means for users to answer that question. In this case, um, a binary slider. Now, as soon as, uh, let me rephrase, what we were testing was a different way that quote-unquote free information on the web or anywhere can be monetized, in this case by having people ask questions instead of serving ads, and we found that the response from the users can be enormous, in our case an order of magnitude higher. So read this, other ways of free digital information monetization exist. And as soon as you create an awareness of the paradigm, the startling monotony of the status quo becomes stark, and the restless and the curious begin toying with the conventions. And I'm sure the TED TEDx audience being what it is, that many of you are right now thought experimenting with uh, new ideas as, 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 as I speak. While the status quo is monochromatic, or at least a gradient from green to blue, there have been innovations in the space, and I'd love to celebrate those here as well. Flatter, for instance, is a service that allows you to make a micro donation to a site out of a centralized wallet that you can top up. This is essentially empowering the user, allowing them to say, I don't need an ad, I don't need ads to have this offer free, I'm willing to support it directly, which totally violates the advertising scheme. Um, crowdsourcing and truly open source softwares allow you to benefit from the intellectual contributions of the collective by contributing yourself. And if you think about it, this is paying for a service with labor replacing the verb buy with work. And I take, if I had a hat, I would take it off right now because this is an amazing movement that's changing our lives. Everything from the Apache Foundation to Wikipedia, which I'm sure all of us here use. Um, all these services wouldn't, I, I feel comfortable claiming, wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for the, the guts to, have, uh, to, ch to challenge this model. <coughs> Before I go on, I should say something about a word that I've been intentionally misusing, and that word is free. And also, I'm, I'm doing this all the time, which is kind of annoying. Um, it's not free. Like, you all know it's not free, yeah? We know that. I mean, now with Google Instant, it's like you can type in a search query, and you can see in real time as the results come in, and it's like, wow, this is super cool, and it's for free, yeah? Let's look at an example. Okay, so more technical problems. Um, bear with me. Let's say that you are on Google and you're searching for a sunny holiday in Burgenland. No coincidence there intended. Um, and so you, you type this triangle at the bottom I'll use to explain cash flow. Um, and so you type in your search query and you see an ad for sunglasses. So you click on, a, you, you click on the ad and you see it, it takes you to a page and you see sunglasses now for, for 10 bucks. Yeah? And you think, okay, the sunglasses look really cool. I'll look really, really trendy. You know, to hell with it, I'm going to buy them. Okay, um, so I, I think you can fill in, the, fill in the letters here. You decide to buy them, yeah? <laughs> Say, the, ten, the 10 bucks of pop, like, it's like Jeopardy, now we can play. Um, uh, yeah. And um, so you, you buy them, you fork over 10 bucks to the Mr. Sunglass Merchant, this, this, this guy over here. And you're not supposed to see this yet, but at this point, everything looks quite hunky-dory. You have, you're now in the super hip, cool crowd in Burgenland with your cool shades, and Mr. Sunglass Merchant has made 10 bucks, yeah? But the ad that you clicked on, let's just say it costs a buck, had to come from somewhere. 
and Mr. Sunglass Merchant pays it. This is supposed to be Google, yeah? So pays it, pays it to Google. So that $1 had to come from somewhere. And I'm sure you guys have figured out by now that it's come, that somewhere is your wallet, that you've paid for it in the, in the higher sales price. So it's, ah, yes, that's, so this one works. So it's not for free, yeah? You have paid for your search query. Now these numbers here, this $10, $1, this is purely for the sake of example. But my team and I did some calculations using real numbers on Google, which we found on Google. And namely, um, how many search queries are made per second, which in case you're interested is 34,000 per second. And that's also a brain, freaky brain number. And, and how much revenue their search division makes. And we calculated that on average, a search query costs you about 1.37 cents. So every time you go on Google and you search for something, on average, of course, some of you guys really do do it for free, but on average, you're paying about 1.37 cents. Now, I'm a Google power user or something, so for me, that works out to about a buck a day. So let's call it a cool 370 bucks a year. I pay Google 370 bucks a year for their not free service, yeah, which is, you think about it, it's pretty crazy. So you're paying for it in the end, just in this roundabout, indirect way with the signature cash flow of the advertising model. Also because the cash isn't exchanged directly, but it's exchanging hands and it's kept in places and space for all I know, in, in a, in really in a system that I will completely never understand. Um, the bankers are making money as well and that money has to come from someone as well and part of this, that someone is you. So that's how, that's how the current advertising system works. So if we're paying for it, why don't we think, out, th think about an, a new way that we can pay for it? Why don't we pay directly, like with Flatter? Why don't we exchange skills and resources we, we already have? Why not answer a question and voice your opinion? I mean, these are all different ways that, that we can think about free digital, f the way that f free, and I can stop doing that, digital information is monetized. Now, and what would the future look like? My last, yeah, okay, this was my like super moment. <laughs> this is supposed to say rocking it at TEDx, yeah? And that was my last tweet. Maybe in the future that's gonna cost me one one thousandth of a cent. Maybe it's gonna cost me an opinion. Maybe I have to go to Twitter's office and mow their lawn for a weekend and I get a million <laughs> tweets in credit and that's one of them. I don't know. What I do know is that I am freaking excited to be part of a movement that's exploring different ways that digital information be created and monetized and I invite you all to think about it offline because you're not going to find the answer on Google. Thank you.